Here's four sound design tips that you can try in your next song. Or I could just call this video, I saw space laces once and this is what happened. Just like you spend time on sound design, you should also invest time on getting as many people to hear your release and all of the work that you put into that bleep bloop. That's right. With DistroKid and all its awesome promo tools, it's easy. Make your next release catch all the attention of your future fans. Show them what your song is all about with DistroKid's promo cards. These are pre-made images using your album art that are perfectly formatted for posting on all social media platforms like TikTok, Instagram, and more. Surely this costs a lot, right? Nope! This is all included with your DistroKid subscription, which is $20 a year, where you get unlimited uploads and keep 100% of your royalties. <laughs> that was pretty swag if I do say so myself. But on top of that, as a viewer of my channel, you get 7% off your first year with my VIP link. Just go sign up. Make your releases look as good as they sound. And as always, thank you DistroKid for sponsoring this video. Now let's get to it. I use Serum to make this, but you can translate these tips to any wavetable synthesizer, even free ones like Vital or Wavetable inside of Ableton. From other videos I've seen, including my own, people will normally use Serum's LFO with a single shape, kind of like this. But when you hold shift and walk, I mean, <laughs> click, you can turn your LFO shape into steps. If you're using Vital, you hold Control or Command. Now, why even do this? Would you believe me if I told you this unlocks tons of possibilities? Depending on where this is mapped, you can get some wild results. You can make entire drop rhythms just with this step sequencer. Now for this sound, I used two LFOs. On the first one, I kept these square shapes. And then on the second one, if you right click, you can change the shape, map it to volume. When I change the LFO to this shape, it's similar to when you change your envelope like that. And then you can do slight subtle changes so that it doesn't hit the exact same every time, giving it some cool dynamics. Ah! None of these words are in the Bible! If you got this far and you still don't know what any of these words mean, watch this video about sound design for beginners, and maybe this will make a bit more sense to you. But carrying on, I use a second LFO because I'm pairing this with frequency modulation. So if you turn on oscillator B, you can use the warp knob, FM from B, and all that does is takes this wave, combines it with this wave, and turn it down, and adjust the octave a little. So now let's take this step sequencer and I use the LFO with the square steps and map it to the warp knob to slightly move it and we can get some space laces vibes, especially if we use a different wavetable. You can play with the rhythms for the polyrhythm nerds. Add sync to this warp knob on oscillator B and pump that up for some Eliminathaniel show movement. Learning this LFO trick is great and all, but the LFO just on the volume is a little basic. So, if you really want to elevate your bass sounds, here are some of my go-to spots to map the LFO. Now for those extreme bleep bloops, the best way to do that is by jumping octaves and sweeping frequencies. Jumping octaves, super easy. LFO to one of the octaves or both of the octaves. Play with this slider and... See all the different possibilities when you just move the slider around? And the second way is sweeping frequencies. You can do this through a filter, especially Combs filter. Now, obviously a comb filter is, uh, uh it's, it's, it's clearly, uh. Each signal contains many frequencies. Each frequency I'm nodding is like I frequency. understand, but I'm not so sure I do. None of those words are in the Bible. <laughs> Look at this comment. It's kind of wild how comb filtering is something that audio heads would yell at you to avoid. But now here I am, here we are, doing comb filtering on purpose. Almost as if in music you don't need to be annoying about what's right or wrong. Please don't show them my channel. If I just put on the comb filter like this, the combs filter, doesn't sound like much. But like I said, it's coolest when you start sweeping it through the frequency. So watch when I move the frequency knob. There's some really cool sounds happening when you do that. So let's map one of our LFOs to it to give it that movement. 
teeth. It's like when you run your finger down the teeth of a comb, you map LFO to the filter to move it through the teeth. This is actually confirmed. That's why it's called the comb filter because it looks like a comb. And I initially had that explanation in there because I thought it'd be a funny joke, but it's actually what it's doing. It's literally this picture. Now to continue on with sweeping frequencies, you can also map LFOs to the EQ. Do that by clicking a curve like this, juice up the gain, juice up the Q, and then also mapping your LFO to the frequency. And this will add a nice vocal quality since it adds resonant peaks to the sound. One could say it adds resonant peaks. <laughs> With the LFO step sequencer, we're able to make a sound that stands pretty well on its own and works as a good foundation. But if we want to thicken it up, rather than wasting time trying to find another sound that complements whatever you made, because you've already made the sound with a good foundation, the support to back it up doesn't have to be super complicated. But wait, why does this happen? How come a sound that sounds good on its own not quite be beefy enough to fit in the entire song? Probably because we did a lot of processing on it. So for this initial sound, I ran it through a lot of distortion using amp, bit crushing with redux, and a rack here that we will get to in just a second. Not even including all the EQ to make it fit with the drums. Sometimes it sounds a little thin, so it just needs that little bit of support. All my homies who make future bass know the solution to this problem. So to counteract that, I duplicate this same channel into a completely new one, change the EQ up a bit, but look at that. The patch is pretty much the same. I've literally just lowered the octaves. So this is plus two went to minus two, this was minus one, went to minus two, and I just lowered the octaves so that it makes a little bit of a crunchier sound. I also changed the filter to a sample and hold for some extra distortion, but the essentials of the synth are the exact same, both using the double LFO concept, mapping to volume, to EQ, to filter, and just group them together. Select it, group it, slap a glue compressor on them, and bam, thick sound that sounds nicely in the mix. Using the glue compressor to try and literally glue the sounds together, make them sound more unified. Do I have the exact settings? No. I just turn knobs until they sound good. And you don't have to stress about knowing what every little knob does. Just keep turning stuff until it sounds cool. As you do that, you slowly learn as you go along. Enjoy the process. Make music. Now with all this stuff going on, you still have to have some consistency in your sound design. So I'm gonna rewind a little to when I first made the sound. This is a very simple, but great way to boost inspiration when you're in a sound design hole. I use this processing rack, which is my Wombo Combo. It's an automatic thickener. So sounds, especially for bass music, are loud and upfront. If you've watched my videos, you'll know Wombo Combo is just OTT and saturator with the knob here to adjust the amount of thickness in case the OTT runs a little thick. Yes, there is such thing. It helps make the sound you're working on sound full from the beginning so that you can experiment with all the different knobs and it accentuates a lot of the tiny details that might get lost. So when you add distortion, the distortion is so much more accentuated. Same thing with flangers and choruses. The idea is something that just fattens up sounds right away. I've seen other producers use stuff like Fat Rack or Camel Crusher, and it's just a way to add that thickness to the sound. You get inspired a lot quicker. And you've been hearing all of this on a bass house beat, and all the dubstep heads are gonna yell at me, why'd you put dubstep in the title? You didn't talk about anything dubstep, but... Right. Just change the drums, it's not that deep. Now go make some bangers.